What's something you've gotten away with as a kid because they're young and don't know what they're doing, when really, you knew exactly what you were doing? Story 1. This thread was made for me. I was one of those kids who was smart but had very little common sense, so doing these types of things was not unusual for me. I was in Pop Warner, think kids from 10 to 13, football, and I absolutely hated our assistant coach. He was the quarterback's dad and a complete butthole to me, was the center, that is, the lineman who hikes the ball to the quarterback. Every time something went wrong, it was my fault, always making me run laps, picking on me for having a squeaky voice and being overweight. With the benefit of hindsight, I have no idea what was wrong with this guy to be so crappy to a kid. Anyway, we went to the playoffs, but lost our last game to a much better team. I had seen people dump Gatorade onto the coach on TV and thought it was my chance. Screw it. Now, he was wearing a white polo with khakis, and I dumped a whole jug of red Kool-Aid on him. I smiled and shouted, Great season, coach! He was mad, but completely shocked, too. My dad ran up quietly, but sternly, asking, What are you doing? And I just said that I saw people do it on TV. The coach laughed and shook his head. He patted me on the shoulder and said, People really only do that when you win, but I understand how you got confused. The whole team went to dinner after that. Dude had to spend the rest of his evening in sticky pink clothes. It was the first time I ever felt like I got away with anything. Gatorade not only quenches your thirst better, it tastes better too. Gatorade. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Story 2. I committed a minor fraud when I was like 12 by engaging in a contract I knew couldn't be enforced. I received some goods that were trial and had to be paid for if kept past a certain date, which I had no intention of doing. The seller company's rep called my house when I was out and got a hold of my dad. He asked them to provide proof of his approval of this setup, and of course they could not because they sent me the goods without noticing or caring that there wasn't a signature from a parent. My dad takes me aside when I get home and asks me if I received these goods, a bunch of oversized baseball cards from some boutique company, and if I understood I needed his permission. I told him I thought free trial meant I could keep the initial shipment and just not buy anything else, and that the parental permission only was needed for actual purchase. And that was a lie. I planned the outcome from legal knowledge I got from TV. I knew the worst thing that could happen was that they wouldn't send me the stuff to begin with due to lack of parent sign. Not something I would do as an adult, since not being an adult was the basis of the scam. Story 3. Shot a lizard with a sling twice to kill it. My cats were playing with the lizard, which is the excuse I used to put it out of its misery. The truth is, I knew I could just shoot the cats and set the lizard free. Instead, I decided to act on some sick curiosity and shoot it. The first hit chopped its belly in half. It was still alive. After the second one, it was fully out. I've been regretting it since I was like 10 at the time, yet I still remember that moment and feel like crap about it. I later on buried the poor lizard together with a poem I'd written to it, basically apologizing for being a mustard. I even told the priest during my following confession, the only confession I ever willingly sought out, and the priest just treated it like it was nothing, and it made me so upset. Weirdly enough, this is not among the reasons why I left Catholicism. Well, if you left Catholicism eventually and are looking for a new reigning power to govern your morality, might I suggest the Lizard King? He's got great music. Mr. Mojo Rising. Story 4. I got a new paintball gun that I had been saving for for months. It cost $1,300. This is important. I left it on my bed to go eat food, and when I came back, my stepbrother had removed the barrel and placed it on the ground next to the rest of the gun. In the split second I saw him next to my gun, now in pieces, I thought he had broken it. The item I had spent months working for almost every day. To keep this from getting too long, I beat his butt. Two black eyes and bruises everywhere. Turns out he was messing with me and my gun wasn't broken. He stopped messing with my brother and I, though. I wasn't punished and he was grounded for a month. In hindsight, I know I went too far, but at the moment I was just so sick of his crap. Reading over this makes me feel regret at doing that whereas I never did before. Story 5. When my older brother and I were young teens, he kept getting yelled at for watching Triple X stuff on the family PC. Our Catholic mom would check the browser history, find it, and yell at him and ground him. He insisted it wasn't him. He would then get punished for lying because it wasn't mom or dad, and it couldn't be the young, innocent, straight-A Catholic high school attending sister. 
A few years ago, I fessed up that I, at the time, the 14-year-old Catholic schoolgirl, would Google triple X and click links to fill up the browser history and then go on my merry way. Every time, my brother made me ticked off. Didn't even watch it, just Googled some boobaloobaloobies and then moved on because I knew she checked our browser history every night. Because that's just what she did. We did not get along as teens. He made me ticked off a lot, so he got yelled at by our mom a lot for triple X use. Ah yes, the good old days when there was a shared family computer. I certainly don't miss getting caught watching some naughty stuff on there, but there's some nostalgia I have for sneaking around and doing that in the first place. Story 6. When I was really little, a year or so into using the bathroom, mostly on my own, I decided I wanted to use the potty again this time. But only the top part was there, just the seat, no bowl to be found. Now, I don't recall exactly what my motivation was, but I definitely remember I knew exactly what was going to happen, as I decided the lack of bowl wouldn't be stopping this train, and how hard it was to not laugh and keep acting confused, as my mom was patiently explaining how it worked, and did I forget how to use the toilet while there was a puddle on the floor like I had made some honest mistake. Oh boy, kids and their bathroom habits. I'm about to have my first kid, and I'm not exactly looking forward to this aspect. But when I was young, I pooed my pants, and I was embarrassed about it, so I chucked my dirty underpants to the furthest back corners of the garage. Still have not found them to this day about 20 years later. I'm guessing they disintegrated? Story 7. I was on a trampoline, and my older brother kept pushing me whenever I tried to stand up. He repeatedly did this about seven times. He pushed me all the way to the springs. I tried to stand up again, and he pushed me off the trampoline. Because of the way he pushed me, I was falling head first. So I reached above my head to protect my head from the impact. I broke my fall with my arm, and I broke my arm with my fall. Bone pierced the skin. It popped back in immediately after stabbing my skin, so I never got to see the bone. He told our parents that I was about to fall off the trampoline, and he tried to catch me, but he accidentally pushed me. And my parents thought, he tried his best, but he's just a kid. Story 8. When I was younger, like 7 or 8, I used to take down my underwear and pants before closing the bathroom door, so everyone would like to see my private parts. I did this because I went to Ireland with my mom, and there was an autistic boy that did the same thing. What's worse is that the bathroom I went to the most was near the front door, and I usually used it right before the bus for school came, and I'm guessing people saw my private parts. The thing is, my parents didn't even try to tell me it was wrong. They didn't tell me not to do it. I even did it when people were over, like when they were right at the door. I didn't really know it was bad. I just knew that other people didn't do it. Not quite the same thing, I know, but I always get a kick out of when I'm in a public restroom and there's a grown butt man just standing there with his pants down at his ankles, lifting his shirt up to his chin like Butters from South Park. Story 9. When I was 10 and my younger sisters were 7 and 4, we hated our babysitter. Me and the seven-year-old spent a whole month saying how much we hated her and that she wasn't in charge of us, in front of the four-year-old. One day I heard the babysitter crying, go to check what's happening, and the youngest said to her that she wasn't our babysitter, and we wouldn't do whatever she wanted us to do. The girl probably wanted her to take a bath or something. The girl resigned that day. My little sister didn't even say that she was repeating what we said, but I knew it was my fault. Story 10. When I was really young, my cousin was my neighbor, and they would leave their giant dog outside so he could run in the woods and enjoy the yard while they were out. Me, being six, and just given the newfound power of leaving my yard to go to my cousin's as long as I didn't cross the road, long story short, my cousin and family weren't home, I went over to paint their black dog with white paint, and they blamed my older cousin for doing it. Literally two years ago. I reconnected with my cousin after years, as we were smoking a doobie, he mentioned the incident I admitted to, and he started laughing and telling me how they always mention him painting the dog. Story 11. I don't know if this fits because I don't remember it at all, but when I was around three or so, my sister, ten years older, kept getting blamed for eating all the ice cream and would deny it, which made my mom mad. Then one day, my mom rounds the corner into the kitchen, then quickly pulls back to watch little old me drag a chair from the table over to the freezer, grab a spoon from the drawer, open said freezer, and dive into the freezer and ice cream, finish and pull back the ice cream, close the freezer, lick the spoon, and put it back into the drawer, and pulled the chair back over to the table. It was almost the perfect crime. 
One of the many pet name epithets I have for my wife is Spoon Lickin' Lady because it's quite often that I'll come into the kitchen in the middle of the night and I'll find her in the dark in the corner licking a spoon of peanut butter. (laughs) For me, it's like her old-timey western prospector Pete equivalent. Story 12. Mooning some lady on the highway when I was like seven. I'd just watched some funny movie where there was a mooning joke, so there I am in the back seat of my mom's car. We're going to meet up with the rest of the family for dinner at Sizzler's, and there's remnants of the rush hour traffic. Lo and behold, my idiot seven-year-old self thinks it would be funny to moon someone in slow traffic. My victim followed my mom off the highway, to the Sizzler, and approached her when she got out of the car. Do you know what your son just did? To which my mom told the lady to lighten up and told her to get lost. Still, I'd rather have that than what happened with the girl in the movie Rat Race when she was prairie dogging on the highway and had to stick her bum out the window. Story 13. My granddad lived with us when I was growing up, and he was really a very mean-spirited man and talked awful to most everyone, including my sister and me. Once his brother, who lived a few states away, parked his RV in our yard for a few months, and one time I overheard my granddad say he wished he'd moved that ugly thing out of our yard. Well, when his brother came to visit... I repeated this in front of both my granddad and my great uncle, and it embarrassed my granddad so much. I left the room acting like I was just being a kid who accidentally let something slip, but I knew what I was doing the whole time. Story 14. My brother was eight years younger than me. When I was 10 or 11, I decided to play lightsaber with a flashlight and talcum powder, spray the talcum powder in the air, and wave the flashlight around. I did this in my parents' room. It was a huge mess, and I just left it there and went and watched TV. When my mom found it, she was livid. Talcum powder was all over the floor, the bed, the dresser, the armoire. I told her that my brother, who was around three at the time, was just in their room. She blamed him. I only admitted to this last year. I'm 45 now. Story 15. When I was three or four years old, I came up with this tactic I used on my dad whenever he got mad at me for stuff where I would tell him... Me digis the gonzo, which basically translates to, you called me gonzo. I don't know how I came up with that. I did like the Muppets, and gonzo was my favorite. But whenever I said that, my dad was unable to hold back his laughter, and he would just forget about whatever he was mad at because he found it so adorable. He loves talking about it to this day, and doesn't know why he found it so funny. He just did. Story 16 My sister is about twice my age, and she, along with her four kids, would often move in and out of the family home. Her youngest, my niece, is four years younger than me, so this happened when I was around eight and my niece was four. Every single morning, my niece would spill her cereal all over the dining room table, and every morning it would get on my lap or my papers for school, etc. I got so frustrated that one day I put a nickel in her Pop-Tart. She ended up biting it and my sister yelled at me, but other than that, I didn't get into trouble. Good thing they didn't put it in the microwave or the toaster oven first. By the way, do you guys like your Pop-Tarts cold or hot? I can never decide, so I usually put one in the microwave for the recommended three seconds. whoop de doo <laughs> And the other one I usually just eat room temperature because I like to peel off the sides, the crusty parts first, and then I eat the center portion. Never had one cold, though. Wonder what that's like. Story 17. When I was 10 years old, my parents pulled me aside one day and decided to break the news to me that Santa wasn't real and they were the ones that bought me the presents under the tree each Christmas. They held off as long as they could to tell me, and thought that I was old enough to know the truth. I could tell it was so hard for them, because they thought they were breaking a kid's heart. The thing is that I knew that for a couple of years already. I just kept pretending because I liked getting presents. Story 18. Not me, but when me and my brother were jumping on an air mattress, he pushed me off and I fell onto the corner of a table. I'm really not sure if he really did it by accident or just pretended to, but I had to get stitches, and to this day, a chunk of my eyebrow is still missing. I think by the laws of cinema, you are now bound to become an evil villain with a lair and a little hairless cat and everything. Story 19. Not sure if it counts, but it's something. When I was younger, I decided to scribble on the wall and thought it was a good idea at the time. I quickly realized what I had done and panicked. I think I was about four or five years old, and I told my younger sister what happened and to take the blame for it if mom and dad confronted us about it. Sure enough, they did. When they asked us who drew on the wall, my sister actually said she did it and got sent to the naughty corner. Story 20. I used a lot of things in the pantry to make a cake. 
I had no idea what I was doing, and I knew very well that it wasn't going to turn out any good. I made a mess with flour and sugar and chocolate and everything I could find that sounded cakey. My cake was a disgusting blob with sprinkles and jam on top. I was kind of proud, but I knew I had messed up. I even ate some of it. They made me clean, but I was making it worse, so I got help. Oh no, it's the glop monster! Story 21 Needed an excuse to skip school? Being sick was not working anymore. How about a house emergency? So I started to toy with all those mysterious buttons on the metal boxes fused on the kitchen wall. No appliances, no food, no school. Oops, no TV either. Darn. My parents found out about it quickly, through trial and error, turned everything on again, and gave me a very patient lesson about what that box was, why it's dangerous, and the important thing is that you learn something. And I still had to go to school. Story 22. Throwing my brother with a swing ball bat, it was an honest accident as my hands were sweaty. Palm spaghetti. Two weeks later, he threw me with the bat because he was angry. He was five, I was nine, and told my mom it slipped, like mine did. And what do you know? I got four stitches and he got no punishment. He laughed at me after coming back from the hospital. That mother fricker knew what he was doing. Still love him to bits, and we're super close today. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video, and have a wonderful day. Story 23 uh, A few years ago when my stepbrother, 13, was around 10, he would pick fights with my 11-year-old brother at the time, and myself, 13 at the time by calling us out for no reason, or randomly insulting us, or taking our stuff, and often breaking the stolen item. We told our mom and stepdad, but since he was a kid, he couldn't possibly know that he was making us so angry. After months of this, nothing had changed. Story 24 My parents had weird schedules, so for school, my mom usually packed my lunch in the evening, and my dad would give me lunch money in the morning, not knowing that I already had lunch packed. I continued the scam for a couple of months until I had enough money to buy a Wii, which is when my parents noticed that they've been tricked by a seven-year-old, but of course they didn't think I did it on purpose. Story 25 My girlfriend works in a kindergarten. The boys are in love with her, so first they started asking things like, do you want to go out, and do you want to be my girlfriend, and such. Then it evolved to them slapping her in the bum every time they went past her. They are six-year-olds. Story 26 my cousin would always beat me up when I was really young, and he wouldn't get in trouble because we were young. So one day we were having my cousins over for my birthday, and I was scared of him, so my brother told me to hit him back. He comes over, a few hours pass, and then he challenges me to a fight. I quickly slap him in the face really hard, and he starts bawling, and then I get in trouble. Story 27 Actually, this reminds me of something I didn't get away with. I was about four years old at the time. My grandma had some rare flower that only bloomed every few years in her garden, and I heard her telling my parents how excited she was about it. So I picked it for her, thinking I was doing a nice thing. My jerk dad spanked me for it, didn't even stop to think that I was trying to be nice. Story 28 My sisters, actually. I've always gotten in trouble for things I did, even if it was an honest mistake. Youngest bit my arm and gave me a tooth mark on my arm permanently. Second youngest dug her nails into my forearm and scratched, would have broken through more than that if I wasn't wearing a jacket, and they both kept eating all the freaking cookies. Still salty about the cookies. Apparently when I was a baby, my older sister would always try to hug me and cuddle me, and since her stomach perfectly aligned with my baby's mouth, containing sharp as heck teeth, I bit her, and 30 years later she still has a scar on her tummy. Story 29 when I was maybe like three or four years old, I remember going to the fridge for a snack at maybe three in the morning. I accidentally knocked a whole carton of eggs onto the floor. I think I kind of just pushed the broken eggs and stuff under the fridge with a paper towel. All of it. It was hidden pretty well, if I remember correctly. I don't remember any aftermath from the incident. <laughs> Weird. This only further proves my earlier theory that messy things you hide in your parents' house just end up disintegrating. Story 30. I have Tourette's, which in middle school helped me get away with cursing. I don't even have the cursing tick, it's really rare, but whenever teachers caught me cussing, I'd just say, I have Tourette's, and they'd leave me alone. They were probably afraid they might get in trouble if they pushed it further. I feel kinda bad about it now, but it's not like I was lying. Story 31 
This might not quite fit, but when I was in kindergarten, I knew how to read and thought it would be funny if I pretended in class that I didn't know how to read. I had my teacher completely fooled, and it only unraveled when mom had a parent-teacher conference and my teacher tried to tell her I was having trouble learning my letters. My mom thought it was hilarious. When I was in kindergarten, I thought I was slick as frick, and I would make cow noises without opening my mouth, like this. Mm. I thought for sure, since my mouth wasn't moving, no one could tell who it was. Of course, from the teacher's perspective, it was extremely obvious. Story 32. The first two years of elementary school, I had to take the public bus two times a week to get to my school. So my mom gave me money for the ticket each morning I needed it. What she didn't know, I never once bought a ticket and kept all the money. Two times I got caught, but pretended I didn't even know how to buy one, and they let me go, because I was so young. Story 33. I used to wait until my mom showed up at the babysitter's to pick us up to ask for snacks. She would never give them to me throughout the day, but she wouldn't say no when my mom was standing there. Zipped my sister in a suitcase and sent her down the stairs. Nothing happened, and she was a bit traumatized, but no physical injury on my part. Hers too, I guess. Story 34. In Greece, when I was little, we didn't have a proper shower and bathroom. We had an outhouse, and would shower outside in the yard with a curtain and a hose. Common for the island I'm from at the time. All the neighbors would do the same thing. I used to climb to the top of the house and watch the ladies showering. I was maybe four or five years old. I knew what was up. There's a place in Greece where the naked ladies rinse. There's a roof on the home where the boy looks at her bum. Story 35. I used to sell weed for a local distributor when I was 10. The money was good, and I managed to make a girlfriend using that money, buying her candies and stuff. But my uncle caught me red-handed, and I said I was selling coriander leaves. Both my dad and uncle thought local boys didn't tell me it was a drug, and I was too young to understand it wasn't. Story 36. When I was 9, I spent $3,000 on The Sims Free Play. When my parents got a call from the bank for suspicious purchases, they were livid. I knew the only way I wouldn't be punished for life was to lie, so I told them the game scammed me and charged me without me knowing. I got away with it scot-free. Yes, my parents got their money back. Story 37 I had stolen my brother's car when I was 13. I had some driving experience and just drove it around the neighborhood, just cruising, so far from a joyride. When I brought it back, the neighborhood police officer was there because my brother thought it was stolen. I didn't get in trouble since they thought I was just being a stupid kid. Story 38. One time I became a black market candy shop owner at school. Of course, my parents thought I didn't know better, but I had a whole business plan. Eventually I made 400 bucks and my parents realized that I was becoming some sort of weird hustler that knew too much financially. I lost touch as I got older though. Story 39. I was five, it was the middle of the night at my auntie's house, and I needed to go to the bathroom. What should I do? I pee in the hallway. My aunt, cousins, and my mom come home to find me dropping a gallon on the floor, and the best excuse I come up with is I was sleepwalking, I think. Till this day, everyone buys it. Story 40. Grabbing booty. I liked girls from before I could walk. From about the ages of three to five, I had a phase where I would just grab a woman's butt. Waitress, butt pinch. Teacher, butt pinch. Random lady in Walmart, grab a handful. I can honestly say the urge never really left. I just reined in that crazy little bugger a bit over the years. Story 41. When I was around two, when I didn't like my outfit, I'd go roll outside in the mud and come back and say, Oops, dirty mama, gotta change. Everyone thought it was me being young and confused. Except my mom, who knew my bullcrap, was starting young, and she'd just have to let me dress myself. Story 42. I remember there was this six-year-old who decided, Hey, it's a great idea to punch a guy seven years older than me because my brother hates him. Fun fact, at six, the he-doesn't-know-what-he's-doing doesn't work for me. But it did for his family who saw this. I picked him up and yeeted him into a trash can. Story 43. My younger brother held a magnet to my Xbox and said the F-bomb when I hit him. But I was in worse trouble for the hitting than he was for the potty mouth. He was seven. Bear in mind that I was keeping him out of half a thousand dollars of debt in games, software, DLC, and hardware. Story 44. Not sure if I got caught, but no one ever covered up. When on holidays, I used to walk around the pool a lot just to get close to the topless sunbathers because I loved the boobies. 
I did this when I was 6, 8, and 10, but I think from the age of 12, it would have been a bit obvious, so it became more covert. Story 45. I accidentally flooded my bathroom by turning the sink plug up and putting the water to a slow drip before I left for school. I was 13 or so, and my mom said I didn't know any better. To be honest, I really didn't think it'd flood the bathroom, so technically she was right. Story 46. My grandfather was always grumpy and didn't like kids, so as he climbed the stairs, I'd pinch him on the butt with a pair of dad's needle-nose pliers. He'd yell, Drag your butt out of here, you goddang little kid! But mom would smile and say, He's just being cute. Story 47. This reminds me of something I actually went through. There was a six-year-old who used to step on me and my sister's feet. We normally didn't have socks on. Twist so that it hurt more. Then when we got mad at him, he would say, I'm little, with a smile. Story 48. Shoplifting. Best friend's boyfriend, nine, was friends with my younger siblings, eight-ish, and all three of them were going to snitch on me, ten years old. So I told them that first, started crying, and said that my best friend's boyfriend peer pressured me, and I got away with everything. Story 49. I was the victim of this. We were both kids, but I was the older one. I had my head out of the window, and my cousin rolled it up, choking me till I was teary. I was livid, but her mom didn't punish or discipline her because she's just a kid. Story 50. When I was four, I caught a spring chicken with one of those toy robotic hands, then threw it in a pool. My mom was freaking out, and my dad just shrugged my mom off, saying I was just a kid. I actually wanted to know if it can float. Story 51. When I tried to eat a pack of cigarettes as a kid, I wanted my mom to stop smoking so much, so I resorted to eating them. She doesn't really remember it, or she does, but she wants to deny it happens. I don't know. Story 52. One time in preschool, I wanted to go to the toilet like I always do for fun. The teacher knew, so she wouldn't let me go. I was so mad, so I ran on the floor to trick her into thinking that I really needed to go. It worked. Story 53. This happened at some toddler age. I took all my sister's desk items and put them in her fish tank, including ink pad, pencil, etc. Somehow, the fish lived. My grandmother was present, though, so I was all good. Story 54. I once ate a whole thing of Tic Tacs in the store without buying them when I was four. Story 55. When I was around eight, I was told I was allowed to get two pet mice so they wouldn't be lonely. I picked a male and a female. A few weeks later, I had 12 mice. I knew exactly what I was doing. Story 56. I wrote on the wall three big C's in blue crayon when I was about three or four. My name starts with a C, so it looked like my sister was trying to get me in trouble. Wasn't I the one who got yelled at that night? Story 57. I just straight up punched my best friend in the face the hardest I could once he came out of a room. He fell to the floor, and I don't remember what happened next. I was maybe four or five. Story 58. I stole a ball from a thrift store. I said I thought it was just someone's lost ball since it was obviously not a brand new item in the store. However, I fully understood the concept of a thrift store. Story 59. Being caught wasted by my parents at 16. I blamed it on friends, and it was New Year's, and I wanted to fit in. I had already drank numerous times before. It was for similar reasons, though. Story 60. Nothing. My parents never made that excuse for me. I wasn't always punished, but I still received a talking to, and was told why what I did was bad. I'm happy they did that to me. Story 61. I am the oldest child in my family, so hadn't experienced it much, but the amount of stuff that my kid brother gets away with that would have gotten me in trouble is unbelievable. Story 62. I guess stealing money from my dad so I can buy Happy Meals and get the toys in them. Poor dad barely even had money back then to support us. Kind of feel like crap now. Story 63. Pretty much anything as long as the house did not burn down. I am the youngest of nine kids, and by the time my parents got to me, they were just too dang tired. Story 64. It's not much, but when I was in second grade, my grandfather passed away, and at the funeral, I splashed my sister with holy water, screaming, Die, demon, die! Story 65. Everything. Up until the age of 19, my excuse, Well, frick about, I'm just a teenager. Then I turned 20 and was forced to be an adult. Story 66. I threw a water balloon during a birthday party at my friend's dad that I didn't like. Made him spill his drink. I was like five or six. Story 67. Eating the giant chocolate egg my brother got from school the second he went to get my mom to show it. Story 68. 
I was the victim of this, though, but once my cousin pushed me down a set of stairs into a brick wall. Story 70. Stealing drinks and liquor. I've done it ever since. Before banana seat bikes, so to speak. Story 71. Fake falling asleep in the car so they could carry me into bed. I loved being tucked in. Story 72. Stealing 20 computers from my school and selling them. Story 73. I'm the older one, so I always get blamed for a lot of things. Story 74. Gleefully saying the word wussy out loud. Story 75. I'm the oldest sibling. Can't relate. Story 76. Now I'm too old to remember. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.